Dr. Mengistu Aznak. Mengistu is the past president of the WFHA um, and is also the country uh, coordinator of Pathfinders uh, International in Ethiopia. Um, Mengistu is going to share with us uh, the challenges of integration in a low-income country. Mengistu. Uh, thank you, Professor Rahman, for the kind introduction and uh, coordinating this important public health issue. Uh, well, in dealing with the effective collaboration between public and oral health in prevention, as well as in primary and specialized care, with an emphasis on the importance of integration, specifically in low-income countries, it's very critical to look at the major issues that hinder the access to quality health services. Before dealing with uh, probably major hindering factors, it might be good to define what integrated service delivery is. And as most uh, organization use, integrated service delivery is probably the organization and management of uh, the different health services so that people get the care they need when they need it and in ways that are user friendly and achieve the desired results and provide value for money. In brief, this definition can be taken as it's providing the right care in the right time and place. And looking at specifically in low income countries where majority of the people lives far from the uh, major uh, facilities which are providing most of the services, we need to think of different mechanisms, how this can really reach the wider population in, in, in a country. That's where for such integrated services, it's very important to really look at the human resource for health, which constitutes the most vital component of the health system. And uh, for countries to meet their health goals and provide integrated health services, it's largely dependent on the knowledge, skills, motivation, and deployment of the health workforce. Who, is responsible, who are basically responsible for organizing and delivering health services. Different global and country level documentation show evidence of a direct and positive link between the number of health workforce and health service outcomes. And in many countries, specifically in low income countries, the human resource for health, including oral health professionals, remain very critically low to provide the essential health services. And looking at that professional level of mix, we might sometimes say it's the most neglected public health problem because if people are not trained, they cannot address the issues uh, 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 in the way we want to address uh, the population. So this is a critical gap. Uh, Basically, this critical gap is created by a number of reasons. Probably the major ones might include the whole issue of limited production capacity. And in a very low income country, probably priorities might be given to other different sectors. And this specific sector may not get the needed amount of resources really to produce the number of health workforce, which can really uh, address those issues. Again, another huge uh, issue with low-income countries relates to migration of health workers within and across countries, within probably migration from rural urban, migration from hard to reach areas to the cities, that affects a lot, but at, at the same time, the brain drain to, from uh, a low-income country to middle or high-income countries is also another factor. Again, poor mix of skills, because unless we have that mix of skills, which I feel like the integration plays a major role in bringing about that mix of skill. And a lot of social demographic imbalances, such as region, which I uh, raised it earlier, place of work, it might, can be urban, rural, and sex, in terms of who is preferred to provide those services, might have a critical role 
in terms of the reasons for those uh, gaps. One of the indicators used by the World Health Organization to measure the health workforce need and the health system resource situation in a country is the health worker density. The number of health workers per thousand population by the type of health cadre, which can really show us really how much providers for the different levels of health cadre are really there. Uh, when measured systematically, this indicator provides information on the stock of health workers relative to the population. I'll only take two examples. Next slide. Uh, to show the health worker density among physicians and uh, nursing and midwifery personnel. As you can see from uh, the density of physicians in most of the low income countries, most in Sub-Saharan Africa, few in Latin America, and also in Asia, you can see that the physician uh, to population density is below one per thousand population. Uh, next slide which is also almost the same for the nursing and midwifery personnel. Again, in the same places, probably the figure you see uh, in, in uh, Latin America comp for the physicians looks a little bit better than for nursing and midwifery uh, uh, compared to the nursing and midwifery professional. So a lot needs to be done in, in, in terms of uh, that one. I think looking at the minimum threshold density expected to be around 2.3 per thousand health professional is not fulfilled in most of uh, these this places. So the question comes, what should be the strategy into that one? Well, this indicator can be used to monitor whether, for example, the size of the current workforce meets a given threshold that should allow the most basic levels of healthcare coverage to be achieved across the country. It's easy to measure this indicator and give a quick view of the situation of countries, which can also be used for a lot of planning purposes that, that even include the whole issue of uh, uh, human uh, resource for health uh, development, um, development of other important areas which can solve that one. However, this indicator probably doesn't necessarily take into account all the health system objective, particularly with regard to accessibility, equity, quality, and efficiency. So we need, we need to see beyond that, which, which might need additional indicators to see the distribution of health workers by probably occupation, specialization, region, place of work, and so on. That's why when I earlier mentioned in terms of the oral health professionals, probably we can say like, it looks like the neglected side of the public health, specifically in low income countries, which we need to do more into that one. Coming to my own country, Ethiopia, even though the health workforce density has doubled in the past 10 years, as you can see from both slides, this one and the earlier slide, Ethiopia is still in, in that range of uh, less than one per uh, uh, thousand population, the, the, the ratio. Uh, we still have the, the problem of that and understanding the health workforce shortage and in reaching the health sector and development goals, the country has taken several measures. Uh, and for, for your information, coming to the oral health workforce in Ethiopia, probably I can say one of the lowest in the world and uh, most of them are either in the bigger cities or in very few peri-urban areas, when close to 80% of the population lives in the rural area. So one can clearly see uh, even those limited number of providers are staying in very few parts of the country when majority of the population lives in, 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 in different places. So what are some of the uh, activities which has been done in, 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 in the past few years? Next slide. Uh, one major uh, initiative is the increasing access to health services through the flagship community health extension program in Ethiopia, 
where you might have heard a lot in terms of changing specifically the maternal child health indicators in the country, this program at the community level played a very crucial role. Basically, the Community Health Extension Worker Program deals with promotion, prevention, and primary curative uh, activities, where oral health has a major place to be integrated if you really use such platforms in terms of uh, 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 integ integrating those, those things there. Again, increasing the production of health workforce, not only at the community level, probably to give you a little bit, the community health extension workers are trained for a year after they finish their high school, and they will be assigned mostly in the places where they were uh, uh, born or grow up for uh, 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 to, to serve in a community of like one uh, health extension worker for 500 households, which means two, two on average for each village. And currently we have almost close to 40,000 community health extension workers. These are not voluntary. These are paid by the government, which clearly gives you the opportunity that someone is there at the community level to be a primary contact in terms of the health services. In terms of the other health workforce development, increasing the number of uh, health science college, both public and private, including dental schools in this uh, both public and private places, increasing the number of uh, specialization areas of training, dental uh, health or oral health is one, in line with the required demand in, in, in the country. The other activity is development of human resource for health strategy, which is responsive to training, deployment, and retention, and program structures. Because sometimes it's not only necessary to train health service providers who are providing the services in the front line, but you also need to see the program structure. So having the NCD unit at the national level and at the lower level is also another progress, which is there. Again, increasing access to primary level care through the expansion of primary healthcare centers and also primary hospitals. And the modest increase in referral and specialized care hospitals is some of the things which are there. With these major initiatives, progress has been made in the past few years, but more needs to be done to bring about better outcome in the health of the country's population, including oral health included into that one. When we talk about integration, I think I feel like some of the specific activities which are probably being implemented and will also work in improving the integration of essential uh, oral uh, care with primary health care includes, first of all, when we think of providers, I mean, training a dentist may take a longer period of time, but can those people, close to 80% of them live in the rural area, it, it also varies in the different countries. Wait until we train a dentist. The, the disease will not wait for them. All those things are still there. So we need to do something to that one. So the whole principle of task shifting, task sharing, is, is a rational redistribution of tasks among health workers, our, uh, teams in which specific tasks are moved where appropriate from a highly qualified health worker to health workers who have fewer qualification, but trained to do the job. I mean, it's not, it's not simply transferring one thing to the other without really looking at into the, the whole issue which, which is there. Basically, this transfer uh, uh, is uh, helping in terms of to make more efficient use of the available human resource for health until we have like what is required in terms of a high level a trend person into that level. But if we look at most of the things, even from uh, the previous presentations from um, uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Mahish from India and Professor, my good friend, Professor Shu from Taiwan, basically like there are a lot of things which we need to do in terms of promotion, in terms of prevention, where we may not need a dentist to do those activities. So integrating into the primary care will help a lot in doing, in doing that one. And this is where essential dental care can be provided at the lower level where community members can get the right care in the right time and place 
without going to long distances to get the service of the dentist. We have several examples of tasks, sharing task shifting in the areas of maternal and child health, HIV AIDS, mental health, eye care, and uh, surgical interventions by training uh, 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 what you call it, integrated emergency surgical officers to provide those services in places where we might not get surgeons in a very uh, uh, short period of time or in uh, an easy way. Another important area is the educational strategies where reforming training curriculums to respond to local context and serving the underserved. I mean, uh, one important area to look here is like integrated trainings and also the whole issue of on the job training because the, the, whole, the whole issue of uh, looking only trainings at uh, the pre-service or higher training in institutions might not be always the solution specifically in low income countries and we need to see different training approaches. Strengthening financial and non-financial incentives because not everybody will go to those remote areas. So do we have strategies for those remote assignments? Someone working in those remote areas can get better opportunities in terms of education, maybe a short length of stay in those remote areas where it can encourage others also to serve in those, in those places. Educational opportunities, limited assignment period, top-ups, I mean, different approach can be used to see into that one. Again, the continuous professional development is a very important area when we think of an integrated service uh, in, 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 in responding to those needs in low income countries. Finally, all these activities and uh, the different approach cannot exist without a strong government commitment, cannot be there without uh, 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 the existence of experiences in some of the initiatives. We're not saying task sharing shifting on, on the air, but there are really evidenced experiences which can be taken further also for oral health into that one. Again, commitment of development partners. Most health programs are supported by development partners in low income countries. And that commitment needs to be there, which includes, I mean, when I say development partners, it's not only like donors, uh, but we need also to see our own professional associations, the private sector, all this needs to be part of that one. Last but not least, we shouldn't forget the community involvement. I think any of these integrated activities, if we can link it with a certain level of social accountability, where community can be asking for their rights and getting the right services into that one will also help a lot, but not only asking for the right, but also, I mean, being part of the different development activities will make a great difference into that one. That's what I have in brief. Thank you so much. Mingistu, thank you so much. That was uh, really helpful. I just wondered whether you could just clarify, um, in many countries, one of the challenges is professional organizations, professionals uh, who often resist in um, task shifting, particularly if that task is undertaken um, at what they would perceive as a lower level. Can you just give us some examples in Ethiopia of the barriers to uh, the shaft shifting and maybe some of the solutions you found? Uh, thank you, Professor Rahman. I think as it's described, I mean, task shifting or task sharing is not an easy uh, activity. Uh, I mean, there should be a world thought in, into that one. I mean, one of the barriers you raised it well. I mean, a professional resistance is, is, is there. Probably, let, let, let me put one to additional barriers which can be there. In addition to like the professional uh, individual or even sometimes professional groups including associations might be resist to some of these changes but additionally work overload is another barrier in terms of uh, 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 task sharing and task shifting another barrier which i will come back again is the whole issue of like 
the quality of care if it's not taught well from, from the right one. With professional uh, 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 groups or individuals resistance, the first thing is how, are, how did we really address the issue with professional associations? One example I can give you is like when we introduced, uh, uh, I mean, a one road implant for uh, family planning activities in Ethiopia, initially we thought that this was only done either at the hospital or health center level, either by a nurse, midwife, or a, a physician. When you take it down to the community health extension worker, there was a great worry from the different. But one strategy we used is involve the professional associations from the start. Don't probably give them a final decided things. Involve them from the initial period. When you know that the number of uh, professionals who can do that services are very limited versus the need for it, that's where you can really sit down and discuss what can we do in terms of that, where they will agree into that one. So the most important thing is involve them in the planning, including the development of different strategies, implementation guidelines, where their mark is there, they are part of it, and the resistance will be minimal. And one other important thing is, I mean, let's take the example of the dentist. If a lot of the promotion, prevention, and primary curative things can be done at the lower level, the dentist will be mainly involved into either high level complicated things and will not have to be overloaded with minor things which can be done by anyone professional trend for that at the lower level, that's why. In terms of the work overload, when we look at task shifting and task sharing, most of the time what we see is every program wants to use available community level structure for task shifting and task sharing. So the first thing is, I mean, as I've already said earlier, I care, mental health, everyone, if you are going down and using the same structure for, uh, 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 which is which is there, we overload the single health worker, which is at the lower level. So proper planning is needed into that one. Sometimes we ask for a report, which can be there in the different programs. The same type of data is requested by different programs. So by really, really working together with different programs, different tech, I mean, healthcare areas, how can we really integrate, even when we do task sharing and shifting is a very important thing. The quality of care, one important thing is, if we do a proper uh, planning to do, in terms of our task shifting and sharing, quality of care can be improved by having the proper training, the mentoring and coaching, and the continuous professional development which helps a lot in improving the quality of care. Otherwise, if we are not strong in our training, mentoring and coaching, probably even beneficiary communities can lose mm. uh, uh, confidence on the provider who is, who is doing those services at the lower level. Okay.